All right, we're recording. <clears throat> I'll know if you guys know, uh, some of you probably do, that one of my first online courses was a uh, cooking course. Cooking is one of my hobbies. I just made something with some very hot uh, chilies for lunch. So if you hear me sniffling and stuff, <laughs> I'm just handling some hot chilies. What's up, Bruce from North Carolina? One of my first online courses was uh, about how to make omelets of all things. So uh, anyways, one of these days I'll get back to uh, making some cooking courses. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming. I'm going to share my screen and then uh, we're just going to get right into it. So All right, can everybody let me make that full screen here? Allie, could you unmute and just let me know if everything's coming through good, full screen there? It looks good to me. All right, thank you. All right, good deal. Well, we're just gonna get right into it. We're gonna cover a lot of ground here about going from zero to learning management system website in a step-by-step -step fashion. Um, learning is a complex thing, you know, software to help facilitate learning. It's not like a one trick pony where uh, uh, the piece of software is just trying to do one thing, like get somebody to opt in or um, close a sale. There's a bunch of nuances to learning for uh, you know what you're creating, how it's delivered, how it's received, how people act inside of the system. So it's a complex piece of software. Uh, and, and really, the, it's, it's about the project, creating real world results for somebody. It doesn't have to be complicated, but there are a lot of moving parts to facilitate learning. So in this presentation, zero to LMS website, we're gonna kind of unpack that complexity and chunk it down into the steps or the bite-sized components, just so you you're kind of get the full picture. And, and some of you have been through this full journey. Um, I would guess probably eight, a lot of you have probably done 80% or looked into 80% of what I'm gonna talk about today. So I'm hoping to really fill in some gaps, perhaps uncover some blind spots. And if you're just getting started, uh, this is a good opportunity to kind of Look at the map, you know, the map is not the territory I like to say, but look at the map of all these different components that come into play to create a learning management system website and most importantly, a result for your learners. So I put a couple of pictures on here on this first slide of myself. And the reason for that is I just want you guys to know how much I'm like you. I may own and, and be the CEO of a software company, but I'm not a hardcore technologist. This picture on the left side is of me drinking a coconut while uh, <clears throat> my, my wife's driving the car. We're down in Costa Rica heading to a film, a permaculture gardening uh, workshop that we later turn into an online course that we distribute around the world. Um, but <clears throat> I, I, that's a course about gardening and growing vegetables and, and uh, growing food forests and things of that nature. And I kind of partnered with an expert, one of the best known in the world about that, uh, that niche, and we created a platform. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm a course creator. Like I mentioned, I created, started with cooking courses. I did this, you know, built up this side business um, about online gardening, organic gardening and permaculture courses. And I started blogging about that. And that's kind of what, as I was doing web agency work also as a way of creating income for myself and my family, I started noticing that the blog posts that I was writing about building learning management systems really struck a nerve. And whereas <clears throat> a lot of my blog posts as a web designer, a web uh, implementer, a builder of websites and web applications, uh, these ones really started getting noticed. So I started sharing more and, and you know, basically I'm just like you. I, I love creating courses, trying to create learning. And uh, I'm not necessarily the best technologist in the world. That's why I've, 
LaFell OMS is not just me. There's a team of people around the product, some with way more techno technical experience than me. We all come together to create this software. But even before I got into online courses, I lived in Alaska for almost a decade. You can see on the right, this is me running a 300 mile sled dog race uh, in the wilderness. I spent, I was probably spent more of my life camping and outdoors and, you know, sleeping in remote places in, in extreme climates uh, than a lot of people <clears throat> and all that without cell phone, without technology. Um, so when I come to technology, I come with a, a real fresh perspective and, um, you know, I, I want to, I'm not in love with technology. I see technology as like a tool for creating results in the world or, you know, creating value in business and that sort of thing. So whatever your expertise is or whatever you're passionate about or however you're trying to help others or teach others, uh, you know, Lifter LMS is a project where, you know, we're, we behind the software are a lot like you. And that's what allows us to kind of, you know, be on the same page about our goals and what we're trying to create and the problems we're trying to solve. So just in terms of this presentation, I want to encourage you to ask a lot of questions. Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. There's the uh, chat. If you just want to start chatting and uh, engaging in the community conversation there during this this presentation, you can do that. But there's also the Q&A feature here in Zoom. And go ahead and type in your question there. Because this is, uh, I'm going to cover a lot of ground, a lot of steps. Normally, I would prefer to kind of take questions as we go. But I want to get through this whole big picture. And, and then after that, uh, we're going to get into some Q&A and, and, and work through the questions for everybody's benefit. So uh, please feel free to jump right in and, and start uh, asking questions as I go. So <clears throat> there's a lot of key pieces from going from zero to LMS website. Uh, the technology, the piece where we're at at Lifter LMS is really kind of the last step. It's a wrapper around the, the learning experience that you're creating. So I've seen a lot of successful online course projects and membership sites and, you know, people building tribes online and that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, and building online business, but really a key component is community. So if I was going to do it in a perfect order, I would get, I would be building a community. I would be involved in a community. I would be involved in other people's communities who shared a similar interest, interest or audience. So, you know, as you approach your project, even start with community, or if you don't have a large community around you, it's really important to start cultivating that. And the other, the other piece to a successful LMS project is to start having some curriculum and some content together. Now, you may be used to um, doing like a live presentation, like I mentioned, the workshop that I went to film and bring digital and global in Costa Rica. But, uh, you know, if you're going to come at the learning management system and the technology, it, things tend to go a lot better if you already have like a baseline of learning content, you know, and that's video, audio, text, images, downloads, uh, and it, really anything that you can embed in a web, web page can be, uh, can be learning content. So uh, I would just encourage you, if I was going to do it in the perfect order, to start with that community. Uh, start getting some building blocks, some content together, some Lego pieces that later you can go get the technology for. <clears throat> and this is really the most important uh, slide in this presentation. Now, if you've got some content, you've got some community, uh, then you need to kind of put a, a wrapper around that and have a method or a process. And, you know, you can be very knowledge smart, but what really is people are hungry for in today's world is results, getting actual results. I like to say the knowledge economy is, uh, it's not what it, what it used to be. Um, people are becoming more and more rewarded for results as opposed to knowledge and credentials and things like that. So um, if you have expertise, if you've built community, if you have learning content, are you able to put those building blocks together in a in a system, in a, in a method, in a series of steps that can predictably create repeatable results 
that you can teach. This is really what instructional design is, is taking the content and putting it together in a, a sensible way. And if you can create that method and it works, that is the most important thing for your online project. It's not, um, <clears throat> you know, how big your Facebook group is or a, a community feature like that, or um, it, it's not like which learning management system you use or, or, you know, what your uh, e-commerce engine is and things like that. The most important, if I had to focus all my effort on one thing, it was the ability to facilitate results in another person or a community. And then you, you need the technology. It's the last step. Do you have Lifter LMS? Do you have a online course delivery system or a learning management system or a membership site system? Uh, the technology in a perfect world, in my view, comes at the end. So we're gonna go through this, like how do you go from zero to LMS in 38 steps? And I realized that, you know, we like to say in our marketing and stuff like that, that, you know, Lifter LMS is easy, it's intuitive, it's an all-in-one solution, but really there's a lot of steps, and there's a lot of components, and there is some complexity. Now, one of the issues we solved in the marketplace was we saw a lot of people stringing together a Frankenstein of other systems and plugins to, you know, do separate things, e-commerce system over here, uh, membership site system over here, <clears throat> learning management system over here, uh, this thing to create more engagement over here. So we integrated a lot of that, but there's still some complexity to what we do. <clears throat> so I wanted to create this blueprint for you, this roadmap of the order to do things the various steps that we're going to go through. And just to be clear what this is not, this is not like a step-by-step -step screen share tutorial of how to implement every intricate detail of what I'm going to talk about here. That would be a valuable course. Um, but for here, right here, I'm really going to go over like the what. What are the steps? How do you go from zero to LMS websites to the launch and beyond? Like what are the, what are the key steps? So, uh, the first thing you got to do really is set up the foundation. Um, you have to pick a good domain name. Um, and, you know, there's lots of ways to pick a good domain name. We have a podcast episode about that on our podcast, which is at podcast.lifterlms.com. But one of the best ways <clears throat> you can see here in my uh, slide is to name your course something like the result and then the method you use to achieve that result. So if I was going to make a course about, um, you know, becoming a, a, a vegan plant-based diet marathon, you know, sub uh, four hour finisher, you know, so it would, it would be something like uh, sub four uh, vegan training, marathon training or whatever. You want to make it really clear, like, what is the promise and then what is your secret sauce or at least just tell me in the name that there is a method to the madness. Uh, then you want to get web hosting. I saw on the Lifter LMS VIP Facebook group, if, if you're not already in there, I would encourage you to join. There's a lot of great conversation over there and I really appreciate all you, everybody in there uh, for, you know, asking questions and helping each other out. There was a recent question about hosting. And not all hosting is created equal. A lot of our technical support questions are just around asking people to ask their web host to update to the latest standard of PHP, for example. Um, and then that solves all the problems. But the, uh, a, a real professional web host, and we have another podcast episode about that called How to Level Up Your Online Business, is you want good web hosting where things like backups, staging environments and quality customer support is uh is something that you can count on so we use wp engine for all our stuff we've never been happier uh it's it's a great platform it's not the only show in town but we highly highly recommend it so if anybody has any questions about hosting go ahead and uh, type that into the chat and the last thing i'll just say is <clears throat> you know this is your business uh, if you just had like a website that was like a marketing website for something else you do, like there's a store somewhere, it's a restaurant, maybe the web hosting isn't as important if it's just a marketing site. 
But if the website is the, plat the platform, it is the learning application, it's important to invest in that, that piece of architecture. Then we all love WordPress. We want to install WordPress. <clears throat> uh, you know, that's our platform that we build on top of. Word WordPress is a beautiful thing and it allows you to extend what goes on in your application further beyond the learning management system. And we get to leverage the great benefits of the WordPress community, including all the language translation stuff that's going on. And really just the, <clears throat> the, all the different plugins that, that people can use to bring in more functionality or different themes that people can use to bring in, uh, you know, better design or different design. And, um, you know, I get a lot of questions about which, which theme works best with Lifter LMS. And we have a theme called Launchpad, which gives certain design attention to Lifter LMS components that you can adjust without having to write code, which is great. There's also been some members in our community who have created some themes with really specific attention to Lifter LMS. Like there's a theme called Course Lady. There's another one called Vantage. Um, and there's, there's another one called The Core. But also there's a lot of great other themes out there. Um, people are using Divi and using page builders like Beaver Builder to create dynamic layouts. And uh, um, there's a lot of great free themes out there like the Make theme, the Sydney theme, and so on. So themes are for design, plugins are fun for functionality. That's why we built Lifter LMS as a plugin. Uh, so then you got to install Lifter LMS and that brings you the e-commerce engine, the learning management system, the, the membership protection of everything, and the core engagement features in the gamification with badges and certificates, and sort of like even the Infusionsoft-like power of behavioral marketing automation all right inside of WordPress. So uh, that's, that's what Lifter LMS is all about. And then, um, you know, Lifter LMS is the free core software. It's our goal and it's our mission that um, Lifter LMS by itself, the free core software, you can create, sell, uh, deliver great learning experience for your courses and memberships. And then we have add-ons that extend more functionality. So it was really important to us that people could, for free, uh, install Lifter LMS, create course, sell their course, get market validation, or what they say in the lean startup as deliver a minimum viable product uh, with the free software. And then they can start supercharging with other add-ons that we offer at Lifter LMS. And also there's other companies that are, that are building add-ons for Lifter LMS too, which is really exciting. So <clears throat> from zero to LMS website in a perfect world, I would install Lifter LMS. I would grab a copy of the universe bundle and start bolting on all the different add-ons that we offer so that you can, you know, use the full force and capability of uh, all our integrations. And then <clears throat> there's a, a quick setup wizard. You want to go through this. Um, there's a, just a welcome screen, a page setup screen where Lifter LMS sets up some key pages, the login, the registration, the student dashboard, the course page, the membership page. Um, uh, there's some payment questions in there for you, current, about what currency and so on. You get a coupon if you opt into our anonymous tracking, which doesn't take any sensitive information, but allows us to see how people are using the software so we can further improve it. And then the last step is that you can install a sample course, which right now you're getting, you're actually getting the demo course from the Lifter LMS website, uh, which is over at demo.lifterlms.com. Sometimes it's great to have a demo course installed so that you can kind of see all the components and, and, and start working like next to that. So that's, that's what the quick setup wizard is all about. Um, sometimes when, uh, if people are having trouble just getting started with Lifter LMS, it's because they did not, um, you know, set up, do these first beginning steps. This solves a lot of uh, issues right here. So then you want to set up your first course. Um, and 
before you really get into the course builder, you want to, you know, configure the general settings there. Um, you know, you can see across the top here in the Lifter LMS uh, settings, there's some, some general settings. You can see the catalog pages, which is where your course and your membership pages are. You have some account options where if you want to collect a lot of information on registration or you just want to collect the minimal, like just email address and, and have people create a password, um, you can do that over here if you want to select a terms and condition page and so on. There's some checkout options we have, some engagement options, some other settings with our various integrations. And if you're using any of the Lifter LMS add-ons, we have a licensing, licensing system. So you want to get that set up and then you really want to add your first course. So you've, you've got a course name, uh, you've got a course featured image, you've got a, a description, you've got course categories, you can put tags on there. Uh, you can add course difficulties and, um, and stuff like that. So that is the very beginning of setting up a course. Now I want to go back to what I was saying earlier about before you come here to like start building your course, the people that we see who are the most successful, they already have content. It may not be all the content, but at least they have a start. Maybe they were, they filmed themselves. They already have video lessons. They already have written themselves or worked with a copywriter to have like the main course description or sales page. So, uh, and it's okay to come here and start create from here, but sometimes it's easier to come to the software and the technology uh, once you already have at least a, a good start on the content. Um, so the course description, this is something with Lifter LMS where there's two versions of it. This one over here <clears throat> is the, uh, you know, what students can see when they're, if they're allowed inside the course, they've bought it or they've enrolled in it. Um, whether it's, if it's a free course or a paid course, and then down here, there's a non-enrolled description. So there's basically two versions of the course page. The non-enrolled version is kind of like a sales page and you may want to have completely different messaging there as opposed to once people enroll, they don't need to see testimonials or anything like that. You may just want to, uh, give them some bonus resources or have, a, you know, have a layout some some copy around the uh, weekly office hours or webinar schedule or just other content or just a simple simple welcome welcome to the course let's get started on lesson one image so there's really two versions of of the course uh, description to set up and then really this is where the magic happens remember again with our our conversation around coming with the content if the, you have the content together, uh, coming into the course builder is a beautiful thing. So you can start adding sections and lessons, duplicating lessons. You can drag and drop these things around. And really this is your command center for visualizing and setting up the framework for your curriculum or your syllabus. So this is a great place to start. And then, um, then it's time to jump over and get into the individual lesson content where you can start adding video, audio, text, images, downloads, or embed anything you can imagine. So for video, uh, we highly recommend Vimeo or Wistia for the embeds there. And um, yeah, the, if it can go in a web page, it can go in a Lifter LMS lesson. So, um, each lesson has some general settings. We've got prerequisites, we've got drip content. Uh, you can add quizzes. So now that you've got your, your course kind of built out, you have the, you know, you can see it, there's a picture of it, there's a description, there's a lesson framework. Now we can start to spice it up a little bit. Uh, we can, you know, decide to make a lesson freely open to the public, kind of like a free sample. We could set up a prerequisite system if it's really important for your course for people to, you know, not go to lesson three until they completed lesson two. Uh, you can do drip content on, you know, have lessons drip out on certain days or days since they start just to help protect focus. You can start adding, adding quizzes 
to the various lessons completion so that people can uh, get their learning reinfor reinforced by some quizzes. And those can be short quizzes, they can be long quizzes. If you put a quiz on a very last lesson, that's, that's your final assessment. That's your, uh, you know, your, your, your quiz if you're tr trying to deliver a certification, that's the final exam. Uh, so quizzes, we have a timer. If you want to use it, you can put anything in a quiz. The question can be video based, it can be audio based, it could be a bunch of pictures and you're asking the person to select what it is and you can set up the question answers. And, and we've got even got some neat little things where you can, if someone gets it wrong and they get to the end and they look at their summary, you can display certain messages around certain, certain answers that they put to kind of help uh, reinforce the learning or help motivate them to try again. So setting up the e-commerce. Um, the free version of Lift Your LMS comes with something called manual payments. And this is where you could, somebody could check out on your website, but then they, uh, their order is kind of suspended into a processing phase while let's say you await a check in the mail, you send them a PayPal invoice, um, you send them uh, an invoice from a tool like FreshBooks or, or uh, something like that, whatever it is. So that's, the, that's a good option. Now, there are, there are cases where people, uh, you know, they, they do bank transfers and other methods of payment besides credit card and PayPal. So that's a good one to set up if it's something you want to try. Then <clears throat> this is our, my personal favorite one is setting up Stripe. Uh, which doesn't work in every country in the world, but in most countries. So you can take credit cards uh, for your courses and memberships. This is for one time and recurring payments. And uh, Lifter LMS is designed in such a way that it has a two way conversation with Stripe. And it can tell, like, for example, if you have a monthly recurring payment, if the payment fails, you can set it up so the student is automatically not removed from your website, but removed from that course or membership. Um, so that's what Stripe is all about. Stripe takes like a 3% fee of the transaction volume. That's how they make money. It's free to set up. You hook it up to your bank account. Somebody buys through your website. It goes into Stripe and then Stripe deposits, deposits the money into your bank account. It's a really great system. Then there's PayPal. There's a lot of people who really love uh, PayPal, especially in the international community. And I like to offer both personally, Stripe and PayPal. I saw that question in the Facebook group. Uh, in my experience, you know, given both options, I usually sell more with credit card than with PayPal, but it's always good to offer both. There's some diehard uh, PayPal fans out there and it's a, it's a great tool if you're a power PayPal user. Um, but then sometimes, if you're not using the Lifter LMS uh, access plan system, you may want to use WooCommerce. So we have an integration to uh, associate your Lifter LMS courses and memberships with a WooCommerce product. And the reason uh, we, when we, from day one, we wanted to integrate with WooCommerce because it's a very mature WordPress e-commerce solution that's, that's rapidly taking market share uh, on the bigger stage as an e-commerce vehicle. Um, we wanted to be sure to integrate with that because WooCommerce has, I don't know, hundreds of payment gateways and other extensions or that you might want to use besides just PayPal and credit card. I like to keep it simple. So if I'm building a site, I personally usually for online courses, I'm not gonna to go to WooCommerce, but if you have a store, like a full-on store that sells, you know, books, live events, um, t-shirts, and courses, WooCommerce is your jam. And uh, <clears throat> you, you install Lifter with the WooCommerce integration, and then, uh, you know, if the system detects, oh, there's a product associated with this course, a WooCommerce product, it's going to instead go to the WooCommerce checkout system and you're able to use their, um, uh, use the WooCommerce checkout instead of the Lifter checkout. And another reason I see people doing this, especially Europeans, is because WooCommerce has a lot of um, VAT or value added tax. I think I'm saying that right. The VAT tax 
um, extensions and so on. So you can create complex tax rules and things of that nature. And then there's the memberships option. <clears throat> if any of you have ever talked to me on the phone, which I know a lot of you have, I spend a lot of time talking people out of memberships. But memberships become vital as your complexity or your needs grow. So what are memberships? In Lifter LMS, memberships allow you to sell bundles of courses at once or uh, bundle in something outside of the course and, and sell it as part of the package. And you can have courses for sale a la carte or individually and also included as part of a membership. So if I have three courses, I, uh, I could sell them individually or I could have this gold membership where you get all my courses at once. Or let's say I sell my course, I, have one, I only have one course and it costs $100 or um, you can buy the gold membership for $1,000 and that includes a bunch of personalized help and live coaching and email support and things of that nature. Um, and access to a page on the website that has certain extra resources and things of that nature. That would be another reason to use uh, memberships. Um, and that is me in a Lamborghini up in Alaska. I have a friend who has a, uh, he's a helicopter mechanic and he actually built that car from scratch. Uh, I used to love uh, <coughs> riding around on the 50 miles of road in Juneau, Alaska in the Lamborghini. And uh, anyways, there's more stories I could tell you about that on another day. Um, so Lifter LMS, if you are gonna use the Lifter LMS access system or the access plans, you need to set up some payment plans and you can use up to six per course, though I don't advise it. In most cases, one to four is plenty. Three is great, two is great. But an access plan are the most common use for it is to have like a one-time payment or a payment plan. Uh, or just like the example we mentioned before with the three courses that are also in a membership, you could set up uh, a single payment for a course, uh, a payment plan, and you could also get a course as part of a membership. So, you know, write it out on paper, figure out your pricing strategy. Um, don't overcomplicate it. A lot of people, you know, you've been on a checkout screen and seen these long pricing tables and like, you know, eight different rows and all these check marks. It can be really confusing. So keep it simple. Don't overthink pricing, but spend some time on it. Uh, if you're going to do free trials, if that makes sense, do it. If you're going to do a, like a, a low first payment or a high first payment, the Lifter LMS access plans are incredibly powerful and really you can set up almost any kind of pricing model that you can think up. So that's really the next step in the e-commerce. And then we're gonna shift gears and get into engagement. So the first step is badges and gamification. So Lifter LMS has an engagement system. There's all these different triggering events you can use to deliver a badge like lesson completion, course completion, quiz pass, quiz fail, um, section completion, all these different things. So uh, again, going back to the earlier point, before you come to the technology, and it's okay if you're already there, but wouldn't it be nice to kind of already have your gamification or your badge strategy figured out? and maybe some graphic design work done either on the cheap or with the professional designer or do it yourself and come up with some really unique badges to make it fun. These types of uh, gamification and earning badges is one of the big differences between um, you know, an online course or a learning management system and a membership site. So you wanna have your badge or achievement strategy then you need to get those designed and then you need to set those up on, well, what's going to trigger it? When do I want these to lay out in an intelligent way? Uh, then we've got certificates. So certification and acc accreditation is the new black, I like to say, which just means it's, it's one of those things, like I mentioned in the first slide where, you see me driving in the car with the coconut and riding sled dogs in Alaska. I'm thinking real world here. 
I'm thinking about what problems are we trying to solve? I'm not just trying to make interesting technology. So uh, one of the issues in the modern world is people complete colleges or university programs or uh, some kind of training and they get a certificate and then they can't get a job or they get underemployed or they get a job, but now they're in like too much debt or whatever. So there's this huge opportunity to create like certification programs that employers value and that people, uh, you know, are interested in doing. And there's all kinds of different ways to attack this problem. I'm just going to give you a couple examples and then we'll move on. One problem has to do with um, traditional schools, especially in-person schools, can't always keep up with the pace of change in the world as it rapidly becomes more complex, especially in things like technology. So if you're training, like you see this online, um, if, people, if you create like a, a WordPress course, like over at WP 101, I uh, highly recommend you check them out. Uh, their training is awesome and it's constantly being updated because WordPress is constantly being updated. So they're able, it's very focused, it's for a very specific skill set. The quality is incredible. And, uh, and even <clears throat> the kind of the opposite is happening. Like sometimes other schools might reach out and license those courses for their, their programs and so on. So if you can, if you can find a technology niche that's being underserved. Um, th there's a great opportunity there to create certification. Like, and I'll just give you another example. Um, think about something like social media marketing or conversion optimization or uh, Facebook ad um, certification. I mean, you can't find that stuff in a school. So if somebody out there is really good at those things and can create a certification, and remember, going back to something that creates real-world results in a very predictable way, that becomes super valuable in the marketplace. So set up your certificates if you're doing it. If you don't need certificates, don't worry about it. Uh, and then we've got the, the personalized emails. So there's all kinds of different types of emails, but I like to call these engagement emails. So when somebody completes a lesson or completes a course, or fails a quiz or passes a quiz, it's good to have some messages set up to kind of scale the human touch with robotics, as we like to say. And uh, you can merge in their first name and, you know, they're, they're, you can link to their student dashboard like, hey, did you know you just earned this badge for passing the quiz with a link to their, uh, to the dashboard, which is that user login uh, short code there. Having a uh, an email engagement strategy is super helpful. And also think about not automating everything. So if somebody uh, fails a quiz, you may want to also CC the teacher and BCC you as like the site owner or whatever that somebody failed a quiz. This, that way it's an opportunity for the teacher, or the tutor to jump in and help somebody out. Uh, who might be struggling and also for like the site owner to realize, hey, there, there might be a trouble here. The, the learning, we're getting a lot of people failing the quiz on lesson seven. Maybe we need to improve the content. Um, if you don't have a feedback loop and you're just pumping out information, that's not really um, the future of learning. The future of learning, there's a feedback loop. And uh, not everything is necessarily automated, but these tools can kind of give you superpowers. So I'm going to get into the final steps here. Um, there's even more add-ons. Uh, we have a lot of add-ons at Lifter LMS. We talked about the Universe Bundle, which is where you get all the add-ons made by Lifter LMS. We've got PayPal, we've got Stripe, we've got WooCommerce. We've got Lifter LMS Pro, which gives you some graphic design assets, certificate backgrounds, and badges you can work with. Uh, we've got Launchpad, which is our theme. We have a Gravity Forms add-on where you can, uh, if you want people to complete a form in order to complete a lesson, this is super, super helpful, especially if you have like a prerequisite in place. Like you cannot go to lesson five unless you upload this photo or write this essay or whatever, that's, that's where Gravity Forms really comes in. We have an integration with MailChimp. We have an uh, integration with 
ConvertKit. Uh, these are email marketing systems. And, um, <clears throat> you know, that we have the emails inside of Litter LMS, but it's also good to kind of be building your email list. Like if you ever want to be sending a broadcast out later, like let's say you have one course and you'd be like, hey, I, I, I want to email everybody in course A and let them know that I just created this new and awesome course B, I would be using something like MailChimp or ConvertKit for that kind of email. Uh, we also have an integration with Affiliate WP. So you can, if you wanna have an affiliate system, uh, Lifter LMS is affiliate ready out of the box. So you can grab Affiliate WP if you want. Uh, there's also another affiliate system called iDev Affiliate that you can, Check out these affiliate WP is made by Pippin's plugins and iDev Affiliate is made by iDev Affiliate. Then we've got WP Fusion, which is awesome. We actually use it ourselves on the Lifter LMS demo. It's not made by us. It's made by uh, another company, WP Fusion. And what it allows you to do is to connect Lifter LMS to Infusionsoft, ActiveCampaign, uh, Drip, or Entreport. And I'm actually an active campaign user at Lifter LMS. So we use WP Fusion to, uh, if, when people sign up for the demo course or come into one of our paid courses, we're using WP Fusion to apply tags. And it does a lot more than that. Uh, but check it out if you're a Drip user in FusionSoft, Entreport, or Drip. Then we've got X, the X, Lifter X API, which is made by Learning Templates, which does a lot of amazing things. Um, it's relevant to you if you are <clears throat> using authoring tools like Adobe Captivate or um, like Tora or Storyline, using these kind of e-learning authoring tools to create uh, learning content for lessons or quizzes um, or integrating H5P content or even serving up um, uh, e-learning content that's hosted somewhere else on the web. It's pretty amazing what Lift Rail, what Lift Rail MS X API can do. Um, again, it's made by learning templates. Uh, if you're getting into X API or the also known as the 10 can API, or you're using those authoring tools, um, it's a niche within our community, but we, we've got a great integration there made by learning templates. Uh, there's a theme that rolled out recently who, had, who gave some design attention to Lifter LMS called The Core. And like I mentioned, there's a couple others we're going to be adding to our store. Um, there's for, over at Divi Soup. If you're a Divi user, you can check out the Vantage theme, uh, which is a child theme for Divi. And then there's another one called Course Lady that I'd encourage you to check out. And then down here, we have our done for you services. So if your head's about to explode uh, about everything that we're talking about right now and all these steps to kind of get everything set up um, and get kind of get, get uh, either the, uh, just the LMS piece or the complete website done, uh, we have some service options there too. So the next step is just to run some tests. Okay, you've, you've got everything set up, you've got everything installed. Um, the thing you want to avoid doing is launching to the world without actually testing your stuff. <laughs> so um, multiple browsers and the incognito browser are your friend. And for those of you that don't know what incognito browser is, if you're using Chrome or Safari or um, Firefox, you can open up a window that will be totally fresh and it won't be logged into anything. So I always recommend if you're building out your site that you have a fake user that you can run through courses or go through the checkout experience or try to access content that they're not supposed to. Um, running tests is an important part of, you know, of web development and, and running your business. Just like uh, this may date me how old I am or whatever, but you know, sometimes when you used to buy clothes, there was a, <laughs> there was like a tag in the pocket that said it was inspected by somebody. Uh, people need to test things before they deploy them. So run some tests and let's see. Well, you, you want to finalize the design. So it's really hard. You know, sometimes when you install a theme with like no content, you start setting up the design, but, there's only so much you can do before you have all your 
your content set up, whatever plugins you're going to use installed and everything's turned on, you really want to come back through and do another round of make sure the design is consistent. If you want to update anything, this is where something like Launchpad is cool because there's all these different options that you can go into and change sizes and colors and fonts and typographies and turn on and off a couple features and things like that uh, or, or select various options or alignments and so on. Um, sometimes you can do that with custom code if you're comfortable with coding or you can hire somebody to do it. Uh, but before you launch, it's always a good idea to kind of go over the design one more time and make any final adjustments. So before you launch, you want to think about backups and staging. And <clears throat> I'm just showing you this awesome screenshot of the WP Engine dashboard. When you use WP Engine for hosting, you can see it shows up here in all the WordPress stuff over here. The, and uh, you can create a backup. You have this copy of your live site and staging. Uh, you can, you know, there's all kinds of like backup systems that you can use. And if you want to test out a new plugin, you can test it out in staging without kind of jeopardizing the live environment or whatever. So before you launch, have a strategy for backups and then what you're going to do going forward when you want to test something new. Um, if you want to change themes or update plugins or add new plugins, that, those things, those are things best done in the staging environment. And then uh, what's your strategy for training and support? So uh, part of my job here in this presentation for you all is to give you the kind of the full picture of you know, what Lifter LMS can do. I'm not going into every single intricate detail of what the software is capable of. And you don't necessarily have to either, but I'm not one of those people who thinks in order to lead a business, you have to know every single detail, but you at least need to be in the trenches and be able to, you know, know the various parts of the house or the different jobs that the that people do who build different parts of, of a house or a, some of a, you know, any kind of system. So I would encourage you to go through the demo course at demo.lifterlms.com and take the course, which goes into more detail about all the features and, uh, you know, ask questions, get support. When you buy products from Lifter LMS that comes with support, so you can ask questions and, um, the more you know and understand what your tools can do, the better you can use them and the more effectively you can delegate to others who are coming on board to help you uh, with your learning project. So one of the biggest mistakes or classic mistakes that we see people do is they, they try to do it all alone for too long. Now I say for too long cause I'm a big fan of bootstrapping and uh, you know, being lean and not hiring people till you can afford it until the business has momentum and that kind of thing. But in order to delegate effectively and to allow other people to really shine in their genius and their strengths, uh, it's important that you at least have a baseline understanding of the various components. Then it's time to launch. So this is where we're, this is where we're get, we've gotten to. This is like step number 38, I think. Uh, so <clears throat> the launch is a time to make a difference. And if you're selling your courses, start making a nice income and that's an exciting moment, but it's, it's not the end game. It's in my view, it's just the beginning. We've done, um, we, we've done some interviews lately and talked about the, the piloting process where, um, and, and I, you've just heard me talking about this feedback loop where if you're not committed to constantly improving your courses, like you see at a, a site like WP 101, it's uh, the launch is really just the beginning. It's a fun milestone and it's a, you know, it's an intense milestone, but it's really just the beginning. Um, so uh, that's really the 38 steps. I'm going to cover a few things briefly here and, and then we're going to get into the questions, but uh, a word on marketing, the launch, is is really just the beginning 
you need to have a marketing strategy. So just when you figured out the technology and just when you figured out the instructional design and just when you figured out how to build community, you also need to figure out how to do some basic marketing. There's three kinds of marketing. There's inbound, there's outbound, and there's relationship. Inbound is creating content. Outbound is going out into the world and, and sharing your message in places with people that haven't heard of you before. And then relationships is exactly what it sounds like, is developing relationships that make sense, that are mutually beneficial, that in some way help your business and the, and the other people that you're interacting with. Uh, all right, so there's, there's a fork in the road at, at this presentation here. So like I said, um, if your head is about to explode on all these moving parts that you need to put together, um, there's really two options. There's the DIY or the DFY. You can do it yourself or you can have it done for you. So we're gonna get in, we're gonna go over our done for you services that we offer briefly in terms of like what that, what that can look like. But you know, if you're bootstrapping and you can't afford to, you might need to do it yourself. But if you have the resources, if you're already a successful small business, uh, it might make more sense to move fast and do the done for you. But just know, you know, when you're coming at it, what decision you're making and, and think about that. Um, so now that you kind of understand all the steps, um, we are gonna get to your questions. And uh, you know, we've, we've answered some of them as we've been talking here in the Q and A. Um, as we go through our, the done for you options that are out there, I want you to keep asking questions, keep thinking about whatever questions you have about Lifter LMS and building a successful online learning platform. And uh, we're also going to open it up if you want to uh, go live so we can hear your voice and have a conversation here in the, in the webinar, raise your hand if that's how you would prefer. But, uh, and you can always email us later at team at lifterlms.com if you have uh, kind of pre-sales questions or questions about the product. Um, if you have support questions, we have the forum in the, on, the Word, on wordpress.org for our free users and we have our ticket system uh, at lifterlms.com forward slash my dash account. Uh, if you have technical support questions, but anyways, for this webinar, uh, I want to, we're going to go over the done for you and then we're going to go through and we're going to handle all the questions you have, but I'm going to turn it over to Allie. She is the director of our done for you services and she's going to talk about the done for you for a few minutes and then we're going to get into our, um, into your Q and a there. So keep firing away the questions. Hey everyone, um, Chris, it actually won't let me start my video, but um, I'll just keep talking anyway, and if you want to let me out of the box and start my video while I'm talking, that's fine. Um, so, there we go. So, um, I don't have 38 slides or 38 steps, but I just wanted to quickly um, talk to you guys about the Done For You services uh, that, that we offer and um, why they might, uh, might be a good option for you. So basically, the done for you can get your website online in five to ten days, um, and it starts at two thousand dollars. The packages range all the way up to ten thousand dollars. There are four different tiers, um, and the real advantage to this is just if you feel overwhelmed um, and you feel like you maybe you don't have the time um, or you know the knowledge or even the desire to set up your website yourself, um, we can just do it for you, and then you can feel confident knowing that it was you know set up by by, um, by the experts and then it gives you more time to spend marketing your business and um, working on your content um, and then you can just feel you know confident and comfortable that your course has been set up the right way so I'm gonna um, throw some links into the chat window while I'm talking um, that you guys might want to check out after the call um, and you can also always email me at that email that I shared in the chat window, which is team at lifterlms.com. And we can have uh, a set up a meeting to talk about any of your individual questions or um, any of your um, 
concerns. So um, at the bottom of that, uh, the first link that I shared, there's actually a little form that we put together which helps you uh, or can help you maybe figure out which of the four packages um, might be right for you. So that's kind of cool. You might want to check it out. Um, the, the basic package that we offer is the bronze package, which is uh, your uh, demo content installed, um, LMS demo con content installed on a subdomain on your website. So um, if your website's URL was yourwebsite.com, um, you might want to have your course set up on something like learn.yourwebsite.com or course.yourwebsite.com. Um, and we just like to do that for best practices. But um, with the bronze package, you get the um, entire universe bundle. And a question that I get a lot uh, is like, hey, I've already paid for the universe bundle. You know, can you refund it? Um, and the answer is we can prorate that purchase towards the cost of the done for you package, any of the done for you packages, or we can just extend your license. Um, so those are two options that uh, we could talk about on a case by case basis. Um, and basically, um, aside from the universe bundle, the bronze package uh, installs a bunch of demo content for you so that. Um, and uh, so that you can get in there and install your own content. Um, but we also style it for you to match your current website um, and your logo. Um, so it seems like, a, even though it is on a subdomain, it seems like a seamless user experience. And uh, basically, it comes with um, three sample courses, a sample membership, one sample quiz, um, some engagement emails and engagement badges and a certificate and then we go through an hour an hour training call that we'll, we'll record for you um, where we show you how to um, customize anything that you want to and you get an hour of our of our time to ask us any questions that you have about lifter and then after that you get to use our pro support system um, the silver package is basically the same as the bronze package but it's with your specific course content so if you already have your videos recorded if you already have your quizzes written if you know exactly what you want um, that might be the right package for you because then we can hand deliver it to you and you don't have to do any work or add any of your own content at all um, the gold package is very similar to demo.lifterlms.com if you guys have had a chance to check that out and that it's a complete website um, loaded up with demo content and demo demo courses for you. And then we go all the way up to the platinum package, which is a full website with your, um, with your own content and your own courses loaded in. So I know I've gone through everything really quickly, um, but I want to make sure that we have time to get to all of your questions. So I'll just throw this other link here in the chat window for you guys. Um, and I just really encourage you if you have any questions um, to, that you want to discuss via email or if you want to set up a, a quick call um, with me to please email me at team at lifterlms.com. I'll hand it back to Chris. Awesome. Thanks for that, Allie. Um, sure. While Allie was talking there, I was reading through the chat and the questions that are there. There's lots of good stuff. So we're going to have uh, some real fun here. Um, I'm going to actually start with the chat, but please use the, the Q&A. It's a little easier for us to use that, but I want to make sure I pulled all the questions out of the chat first before I switch over to Q&A. Um, I'm going to start with uh, David J. He was asking about security and Lifter LMS compared to other programs. He was listening to someone about losing all their content when their LMS software was hacked. That's a, that's a good question. Um, there's a lot of levels to that. Sometimes with Lifter LMS updates, we're constantly evolving the software. There's a database update. So you, if we do that, there's this button you have to click to, to update the database, which uh, sometimes resolves some content issues. But I've actually had my website hacked before. It's, it's one of the reasons why I love companies like WP Engine, where they have some security measures in place. Yeah, it's $30 a month instead of, you know, $10 a month. But that's priceless to me because I've lost, I've had like, um, you know, offensive advertisements all over my online, my gardening online course site before because it got hacked. This is WordPress. Uh, any site really can get hacked. 
big company websites, you know, banks, they get hacked. <laughs> so uh, you want to have a plan in place. This comes back to the concept of having a backup system, staging environment, and a technical team that can help you. There's also third-party services through a company like Securi that can uh, add some additional help. But if you're going to pay for Securi, you might as well just pay for hosting like WP Engine that has all that stuff included. Um, in terms of like credit card security, uh, that's one of the beauties of working with Stripe. You're not necessarily taking on the responsibility of locking down that credit card. As the website owner, you're only going to actually be able to see like the last four digits of that person's credit card. So all that PCI compliance or financial security issues is handled between Stripe and the bank. Um, so just because you offer credit cards on your site, it doesn't mean you have to like have some kind of like government grade web hosting account. That's really why you want to use a service like Stripe and PayPal that handle those kinds of security issues. So I hope I answered your question, David. If you have more questions about security, um, ask in the Q&A. If you do get hacked, um, this is where you really need to have your technical team on store. With WP Engine, you press one button to restore a previous version of your site. But if you, need, if you don't have that stuff in place, you're going to need to restore a backup from somewhere. And if you don't know how to do that, you're going to need a web developer to help you do that. All right. Um, let's see here. Can the quiz be open-ended like a survey? Can the answers be downloaded? Uh, we're currently adding more question types, working on adding more types instead of, um, in addition to multiple choice. Currently, we only have multiple choice, but we will be getting into multi-select and fill in the blank and open-ended stuff and assignments requiring manual grading. So we'll get there, but currently it's just multiple choice. You could use our Gravity Forms add-on with, along with Gravity Forms and create a form where somebody submits something, which is cool and works for a lot of people. It's just currently that operates outside of the Lifter LMS grading system or the progress prevention system or whatever. So uh, if you just are trying to collect it and you don't need anything more advanced than that, I'd encourage you to check out the Lifter LMS gravity forms. Um, Janet Kennedy, how's it going, Janet? She needs an all-in-one membership course solution. That's what Lifter is. Uh, it, it has it all kind of bundled into one. If you have a further question on that, uh, ask us in the Q and A. Let's see here. For the marketing part, what landing page software would you recommend for starting up? If I'm starting up, I would not use a marketing uh, landing page software. I would just use that course description, non-enrolled user view for my sales page. That's the lean startup way to do it. Um, if you want to get a little bit fancier, you could, you know, reg use a regular WordPress page, or if you want to start spending money, you could get into something like lead pages and then have a buy now button that links into the lifter LMS checkout with a specific course or membership or an access plan in the cart. You can do that stuff if you want, but I recommend keeping it simple and start with, um, just start with using the, the built-in lifter LMS course description. Uh, let's see. Another question about which membership plugin do you recommend? Lifter LMS is an all-in-one solution, so it has its own lockdown membership protection, and you can create multiple levels and things with the Lifter LMS membership. The best program to create online editable forms like a questionnaire. I would go back to Gravity Forms again there. That's a great one. Um, Ninja Forms is also another good one, so check those out. Uh, there's a free version of uh, Ninja Forms in the WordPress repository. Let's see here. <clears throat> so security is best handled by an expert. Uh, PCL, DSS. Yep, so Sean, yeah, I've seen Sean in the Facebook group and, and there's been a couple people in there who are actually creating courses around cybersecurity. I'm gonna have to have you guys on the podcast and learn from you and help share your wisdom with the community if you'll have me. Uh, that would be great because um, there's always uh, a lot to learn about that sort of thing. And I want to make sure I'm making the best recommendations and so on. Let's see. Does Lifter LMS provide technology to create a webinar or do you recommend another program? I recommend what we're using right now, which is Zoom. Uh, Zoom is great for one-on-one -on -one meetings, group meetings, and webinars. 
uh, there's no real solution in existence where you can like embed a webinar into a, like a WordPress page. So like I mentioned before, on the inside enrolled view of a course is a great place to list your, you know, webinar schedule and, and link to login details and things like that. So, uh, <clears throat> all right, I'm going to jump over to the Q and a here. Ron's asking, will the slide deck be available after the webinar? Yes, I'm definitely going to post it in Facebook. And I, if I get ambitious, since I'm a marketer, I was thinking about also putting it on SlideShare since I don't have any content on there yet. Might as well try that. So uh, anyways, yes, we will get that out there. Is user creation handled by the native WordPress backend or is it handled through the Lifter LMS by itself? Um, user creation is happen, it happens when someone goes to enroll or check out into a course. It happens in the, so it's a front end experience. It's part of the registration process and they're not like on a WP admin page. It's part of the, uh, the flow of, of, um, of enrolling in a free course or purchasing a paid course. So I hope I answered that. If you have more questions, let me know. Bob Askew from Down Under in New Zealand is asking about Tyler Moore on YouTube who walks you through how building a WordPress website step by step. Um, his, his ethics are good. Maybe a joint cooperation would help a lot of people set up the CMS to go with Lifter LMS. Yeah, Tyler's great. He's been around. Um, I came across him on YouTube like six years ago and he was creating a lot of content about WordPress. But yeah, he's, uh, I should try to, I, it would be nice to connect with him and stuff like that. I'm, I'm a big fan of video marketing, not for marketing's sake, but just for the huge power of video. And uh, we put a lot of stuff on our YouTube channel and try to, um, you know, whenever we can make videos to explain things, share those on YouTube, share them on Facebook. Video is just such a powerful tool for teaching. So I, I appreciate you bringing that up. And to all of you out there listening, um, you know, video is a great way to do marketing and it's just a really, um, it's a really important skill set for the um for the future especially if you're in the education niche do i recommend having a separate url for your membership site for security purposes not really it just depends on uh well i should create a podcast episode about that about how to know when you should use a separate url or a subdomain for your site um <clears throat> but if you're if you're if you're happy with your existing site, it's not too old, you're keeping it updated and you're adding courses to it, just keep it there. It'll be less work than maintaining two locations. But if you're not happy with it um, and you're, you know, you, you want to kind of start over or you, for whatever reason, like the education part isn't the main business, then it makes sense to put it on a subdomain or move it somewhere else and really protect it. Um, I don't necessarily see a security benefit either way, but um, perhaps Sean could let us know in the Facebook group. Does Stripe hold the fund for a certain period of time like PayPal? So what's really annoying about PayPal is PayPal um, holds the funds and then you have to transfer it and then you have to wait five days. Uh, with Stripe, I think like the first month you have it, there's like a, maybe there's a four day delay and they automatically don't deposit it. You don't have to force the transfer of it. But also they, um, uh, I've noticed like after two weeks or whatever the initial startup period is, it goes in pretty quick, like within 24 to 48 hours. It's not instant, but it's pretty fast and it's, it's totally hands off, which is what I love about it. Chris, I, I just wanted to add, it also depends on the country. Some countries like Australia have a much longer holding period. So That's a good point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can courses be time limited? Example, expires in six months. Yes, they can. Um, there's a link we'll try to dig up for you, but if you Google uh, Lifter LMS access models, there's a blog post and there's another blog post, Lifter LMS pricing models. And that shows you, yeah, you can expires in six months. You can do that. You can do trials. You can do all kinds of things. 
but go find those t- couple of blog posts. Um, can you describe the security on Lifter? My concern is protecting original course content. So this is the internet. It is, you know, <clears throat> I mean, the musicians tried to lock down the music, but uh, Napster got them or whatever. Like, it's the internet. So even if you have anything's perfect, like somebody could like film your course with a video camera if they're inside of it or whatever. But um, there are some best practices. So one of them is to use a professional video host like Vimeo or Wistia where you can lock down that video so that it's only playable on your website. So that's like a security measure you can take. There's other code you can add to your website that makes it so that people cannot copy and paste. There's more secure ways to um, lock down your downloads if you want to. There's other plugins where um, you can add so that people can't, two people in different locations can't log in with the same username and password. So it's a, it's a rabbit hole you can go down, but um, my usually my advice is uh, don't focus on the two percent that are going to steal from you. Focus on the um, the ninety eight percent who love you or are willing to pay for your stuff and play by the rules. So. Uh, Let's see. I understand Michael asks that he understands drip courses, but can courses also be sequential so that you do lesson one before you can do lesson two, et cetera? Yes. So um, at the lesson level, you can have uh, a prerequisite, which is what you're describing. And then uh, you can also do that for at the course level. So let's say I can't take course B until I take course A. And then we also have something called course tracks where if there's these three courses, it doesn't matter what order you take them in. But after you complete all three, you can earn some kind of engagement. And the usual use case for that would be a certificate. So like a degree program. And then drip content just simply means uh, you can use drip and prerequisites side by side. Drip just means that I can not go inside this piece of content until it becomes available. So most people do that to protect focus. That's the right way to do it. The wrong way to do it, in my opinion, is uh, to try to drip things out to try to get more monthly payment or or keep, keep somebody in there longer or whatever. The main reason to use drip is to protect focus. Does Lifter work with AWeber integration? No, we do not have an uh, AWeber integration. uh Maggie raised her hand and she might want to talk. Cool. We we'll, oh, should ask that question. Okay, cool. We'll, uh, we'll do the live stuff in just a little bit, Maggie. But there's not something right out of the box that's going to work for you, but there are workarounds and maybe we could talk about that live. Let's see. Uh, Rosvan asks, anyone who's used WordPress page builder with Lifter LMS, for example, to style lesson pages, especially interested in Elementor and Beaver Builder. I'm a huge Beaver Builder fan. If you go to the Lifter LMS demo, uh, that's an example of a website with our theme Launchpad combined with the Beaver Builder page building plugin. Um, and we, we've also used it to you know, create certain layouts inside of, um, uh, of the lessons. So I didn't, yeah, I'd encourage you to try it out. I'm partial to Beaver Builder. I haven't experimented with Elementor. And I do know that there's a lot of people in the Facebook group uh, who, who use the Divi Builder. So page building on top of themes, on top of plugins is a great way to kind of spice up the design and your layout potential. And which one you use is, um, you know, there's just different options out there. So Regina asks, I'm currently using Infusionsoft, but find it expensive and difficult. I agree. We used to use Infusionsoft. Now we use ActiveCampaign. Um, how much is the add-on package that includes ConvertKit? So Lifter LMS ConvertKit integration is $99 or you just get it as part of the universe bundle, which is $299. Uh, you still need to get your own ConvertKit account. I'm not sure what their pricing strategy is, but the integration from us is a uh, $99. Can you give an example of how the Gravity Forms plugin can be used? Yes. 
We have a podcast. I actually interviewed uh, James Laws from Ninja Forms about how to use forms in learning management systems. So we're going to have an episode coming out soon about that on our podcast. But once you really wrap your head around what you can do with forms, um, it will really open up your mind to like a sort of an endless stream of creativity and options. But some of the classic things you could do is create a dynamic form that you're collecting long answer, short answer, multiple choice, check boxes. Uh, you could do a survey. <clears throat> you could collect an upload. If you have like a, you know, some kind of like workout like health and fitness course and the students are supposed to upload pictures of them doing exercises or share video or um, let's say in order to complete this lesson you need to buy this product so you have a form that handles a little e-commerce transaction um, let's say a form actually um, post like you can connect a form to a blog so let's say you fill out the form and it publishes a post to the front end of the website there's really no end <laughs> to what you can do with forms. So, uh, yeah, I would encourage you to go check out the Gravity Forms website and also go check out the Ninja Forms website and look at, just read about what all these different add-ons they do and it'll, it'll kind of blow your mind all the different things you can do with forms. Let's see. Maggie is looking to use this, the stored library of content such as check, checklists as a membership. Do I really need to get a domain for it? Can it reside in my current domain and server? Thanks. Yeah, if, you, uh, if, if you're using Lift Your LMS as your membership tool and you, put a, you create a page and you lock that down with Lift Your LMS and that page holds your downloads, you're good to go. So um, yeah, it's just a question of, you know, if you if the, that component is not really the primary business or whatever, then it might make sense to separate it out. But that's not from, based on your question, I think you'd be fine to keep it on the main domain name. Jana asks, to set up a full membership site, she needs a theme, Lift Your LMS for the membership gateway, and Lift Your LMS for courses, correct. So, um, uh, just to, like in this slides, <clears throat> I'm just going to fill it out really quick here. You got to have the domain name. You got to have the hosting. You got to have WordPress. You got to have your theme. You got to have Lifter, and you're good. That that gives you the website with the courses, the membership, and the e-commerce. Um, that's it. Let's see. Jana asks, if we commit to a done for you service, what's the timeline to get you started? Ali, you want to take that? Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, the timeline to get started is really dependent on what type of done-for-you service you're interested in. Um, sometimes we're waiting on the customer to provide content, but um, we're really ready to go within a day or two of, uh, of you purchasing a package. So um, if if it's a bronze package or a gold package, the startup time is usually pretty much instant um, because a lot of the times we're just waiting for uh, people in the other two packages to, to send over their content with us. But I like to set up a kickoff call um, within definitely within the same week, usually within the next two days of when um, somebody purchases a package. Awesome. Thank you for that, Allie. Yeah, sure. Uh, Janet asks if we're recording yet. Yes, you, we are recording. So we'll email this out and you can share it with your business partner. Is Articulate supported in Lift Your LMS Studio 13? I'm not sure what Studio 13 is, but that is a great question uh, for Dennis of um, Learning Templates. He's the creator of the Lift Your LMS X API plugin. He may even be on this call. I'm not sure, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, Lift Your LMS. X API is designed to, to allow you to serve up articulate content. So you should be good to go there. Sean asks, it will, Sean says it will not heighten the security at all. Well, you're going to have to explain that on our podcast. Let's see. Stripe, Stripe doesn't transfer over the weekends. I've noticed that's good to know. Um, 
somebody's got to sleep, you know, in the web world, <laughs> sometimes, uh, you know, I, that's fine. If Stripe people need to sleep, that's cool. Uh, can I import usernames, emails from a CSV file into Lyftr LMS or WordPress? We do have the ability to import and export courses um, and in clone courses. But in terms of imported users, uh, there's other WordPress plugins that you can use for that. Like uh, there's a great plugin called WP All Import. I'd encourage you to check that out. And, uh, and then in Lefter LMS, there's ways to, um, you know, enroll a bunch of people at once in certain courses or memberships. Uh, or you can get, use our, the voucher system where you kind of send all those people a, a code that they can use to activate their accounts and automatically enroll them in certain courses or memberships. So there's different ways to attack that. Um, if you have more questions on that, maybe raise your hand and we can talk about it live. Victor asks, what is the best way to track assignment submission for all students? So um, we're currently working on developing our own assignments requiring manual grading system for Lyftr LMS. If you are, but you can still figure something out for now. So one way to do it would be to use the Gravity Forms uh, add-on that we talked about. And you could, uh, when somebody submits that, it it deposits, sends you an email, has all kinds of notifications, uh, gives you um, uh, an area called entries where you can go to retrieve all the submissions. So it's pretty workable. Um, you can also embed like Dropbox folders or Google Drive folders for people to drop things into uh, right inside of Electri LMS lessons. So there's lots of different ways to, to handle that one. Uh, Jana asks, wait, hold on. <clears throat> Have you got a checklist of everything you need for a done for you service? You want to take that one, Allie? Sorry, I was muted again. Uh, um, yes, uh, everything we need from the client. Is that, is, is that what the question is specifically? I'm guessing, I don't know if Janet, if you want to answer in the chat window. But um, yes, we can we can provide you with a list of everything um, everything that you need to provide us. It's it's pretty short what the client deliverables are. Um, basically, off the top of my head, I don't have my notes in front of me, but we'll need your logo. Um, we ask for a couple of design references or uh, what your current website is to take a look at, so we can match that style. Um, and then, then um, we will ask for your hosting login. In, so we can take a look at that information and we would if you're purchasing a bronze uh, or a silver package we would need you to set up a subdomain on your current website and that's really like sort of what the short list is um, but Janet if you have any more specifics that I didn't cover or um, any further questions on that you can definitely uh, um, send me an email or just type it into the type in another question a follow-up question so the next question is from Mary Ann. <clears throat> uh, when do you anticipate the assignments and new quizzing features will roll out to Lyft LMS? We don't have an exact ETA on it, but I will say that um, quiz question types, assignments requiring manual grading, uh, those are some of our top priorities for, you know, in this you know, as we, we recently rolled in 2017, those are very top of mind in our priority. And, um, uh, and, and just like you saw us do recently with the free course enrollment, uh, user experience improvements, improvements around the quizzes and improvements around user experience for both the student and the person building the course uh, and the, giving teachers a little more like separating out the WordPress admin from the teacher role. Uh, these are like our top priorities. So I'm sorry I don't have an exact timeline, but uh, those, those are like really at the top of the list. Um, all right, let's see here. So I'm going to take a few more from the chat and then uh, go ahead and raise your hand if you'd like to come live and ask questions and, or, or and discuss anything. If not, no worries. Uh, Bob had to go from New Zealand, so 
I'm glad he was here, able to hang out. And then uh, Nat from uh, Australia was saying they have Stripe puts money in the bank account the very next day. So it must depend. It might, maybe it, it just depends. So, and Harry, thank you for coming on the call. <coughs> um, let's see if we have any hands up and let's see, we've got a couple hands up here. So let's see here. Let me uh, actually stop sharing my screen so I can I can uh, do that better. All right, so what do we have here? I see two hands up. Who's got their hands up? Oh, there's one, Maggie. Sean, we'll start with Maggie. So Maggie. How you doing, Maggie? I am doing really well. I'm so excited that you're doing this. Thank you to you and Ali and answering all these wonderful questions. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on the call. What yeah. can we what can we do for you? What's your question? Well, I just found out about Lifter. I don't know what rock I was under, but I just found out <laughs> about it uh, from uh, uh, Michelle Noonan, Melissa Love, and Ellen something. I forgot her name. She had you on a, a, a podcast talking about it. That's why I found out about it. So my question is, what I'm looking to do is I have several checklists that I want to create blog posts at the end of the blog post. I want them to subscribe to my Aweber and then they get an email that takes them, that gives them the login information for the membership site, which will be the lifter where I have all the checklist. So what is the workaround since it doesn't integrate with Aweber? I so have you right now. All right. <laughs> So here's here's the deal. You're talking about a blog post with a checklist content upgrade, correct? Yes, correct. Um, so you can do that. I mean, are you are you good with that point? Like getting them to opt in from the blog post and deliver the upgrade? Yes. So you got that. So then in Aweber, what you want to do is uh, on that content upgrade delivery you want to drip out either immediately or the next day or in an hour or whatever, um, uh, an email that has a lifter LMS voucher code in it and a link to the registration screen. So what they do is they click the link and then they enter their email password and voucher code and boom, they're into the site. Correct. So that's, it's there. It's already there. It's not even a hack. That's actually a pretty good user experience. So um, if that doesn't make sense, email me but at team at lifterlms.com. But I think what you need to do is go to the Lifter LMS website and scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and you'll see knowledge base and FAQ. And just go in there and look for uh, the articles about vouchers and then that'll set you free. Oh, I was looking for Aweber and I couldn't find it so okay vouchers i'll go look for it that is exactly what i'm looking to do yeah you're using you're, you're using aweber to um you know initially get them for the content upgrade but then you're activating them into the course through lifters so you've already got them you've already got them you've already got them in your aweber from your content upgrade now you're just using aweber's um autoresponder sequence to give them what they need to activate their account on the membership. Absolutely. That is exactly what I'm looking for. Is the voucher part of the add-on? No, it's part of the free lifter LMS. Oh. So we're wow. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we're oh awesome my that way. gosh. The reason why is later on in third quarter, I am going to have courses. Yeah. But for now, I just want to build the mailing list and bring them on. So I figured the LMS will, um, will fit every single need that I have, except for the Aweber. But this solved it. Oh, my gosh. I am ready to jump on walls now. I am so excited. 
Good. <laughs> well, well, thank you for wow. uh, <laughs> thank you for uh, coming right. on. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move you out and bring in Sean. But it was great. It was great to meet you. And feel free to hit us up if you have any more questions about that. Okay. Actually, I would love for you guys to come on my site and do a uh, a, a podcast about this because a lot of my viewers are having the same issues that I am having. I'll be there. <laughs> Send me an invitation. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, the same thing, help at lifterlms.com? You can do that one, or for to get to me quicker, it's team at lifterlms.com. Okay, perfect. I'm going to send it out to you guys. Thank you so much, Ali. Thank you sure. so much. Chris. You guys have a great week. All you right. too. Thanks, Maggie. Bye, Maggie. Bye. Let's see here. Sean's coming in, and he's going to teach us a little bit about um, cybersecurity, I think. Let's see. What's up, Sean? Hey, man. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, asking a lot of good questions. And it's been great to see you in the Facebook group. Oh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So my thing is that I was with Thinkific for the last five or six months. And they really, you probably saw it on the Facebook group post, they really haven't been doing the right thing with security. And since I teach cybersecurity, that really bothers me. Um, so I found you guys and I feel like, you know, once I have more control over my system as a whole, then my security can be better, of course. So what I need to do is I have like 500 people um, either signed up for a free subscription or just pre-enrolled or, uh, and then like 200 and something people that are actually active and they've actually enrolled in a course. So my question is, since I'm going to be switching over to you guys, now how do I handle transferring users over? Obviously, you know, they've paid already and the people that paid the one-time fee, that's fine. I, I would like to just be able to import them somehow and tell them, hey, you know, just create a new password or set up a new password or whatever. So is there a way that I could actually do that? That's why I was asking the questions about whether the backend for user management is actually WordPress based or is it through Lyft or does like you guys have your own engine for that? Yeah, it's uh, it's WordPress based. So like we, um, I mean, we add more data to the users than like default WordPress, but sure. um, if you can figure out a way to get those people into WordPress, um, the easiest thing you could do is just bring them all over and then um, give them some kind of activation code like our voucher or or a 100% off coupon or something like that. But okay. it gets a little tricky with this, the people that are midstream. So right. uh, uh, there's no way, there's no real way around it besides doing a little bit of manual uh, like is your stuff like monthly for recurring forever? I think that well, Yeah, I, I do have subscriptions and it's monthly. And then the reason why, one of the reasons, many reasons why I'm switching away from Thinkific, it, doesn't, it wasn't really a real membership deal. Like I create bundles and I manually enroll them and it was just a real nightmare for me. So if I create like a gold package, like you guys were saying, I could basically just, you know, that's it. That's all I have to do. So um, yeah, I have, have a mixture of the subscriptions. Now subscriptions, I wouldn't care or so much I would see where their end date is for the, their subscription to renew. So it's month to month. And then I would just manually enroll them in the courses and then set their expiration date for the same thing. So then they would just be rebuilding through Stripe, I guess, to uh, re-enroll or to keep their subscription active. The one-time fee users, you know, a flat fee of 130 bucks for the course, that's lifetime access to that course. And so I was kind of anticipating the same thing. I just have to manually enroll them with no expiration date into that one course. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're pretty close. It's just that grandfather, like how are you going to handle the grandfathering or whatever? That's right. Like if you already, lifetime's actually fairly easy. Like if you want to just let that subscription run and Stripe and just give them free access to the new platform. Right. And then uh, you just have to keep tabs on them and Stripe and see if they, uh, you know, when they cancel. But the new people that come in, if they cancel their monthly, then they'll automatically be removed, but you'll always have those legacy people that you need to just do your accounting with or keep an eye on. Right, yeah, I'm gonna just send them all emails explaining what we're trying to do and, and hope that they work with me. And if 
do I have to cancel their subscription inside of Thinkific through Stripe and then just have them re-sign up for a new account? I think that the majority of them will. I think maybe I'm looking at a less than 2 to 4% loss, um, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, that would, <laughs> so, that would be ideal. I mean, that's ideal. That's always the fear in a, when you're switching platforms is that you'll lose rec- much of recurring revenue because people... But the reality is if you're your course and your content and stuff is really good and people are loving it. If you just say, sorry for the inconvenience, we're switching systems. Can you please re-sign up? They'll do it. You know? Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll give them like a discount or something like a 10% off or something like that. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good idea. That's a really cool. good idea. Um, I'm, yeah, serious. You guys are- I'm serious. I want to have you on the podcast to talk about cybersecurity. Yeah. So yeah, whenever you guys are ready, man, I have a lot of good info. All right. That sounds All right, good. Just send me a message. Let me know. Thanks, Kristen. Guys, I appreciate it. All right. Take care, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Take it easy. Bye. Chris, we have a couple of new Q&A questions. Q&A questions. All right, let's check that out. So Regina asks, can you share the difference between Lifter LMS Pro and the Lifter LMS Universe Bundle? Um, so Lifter LMS Pro is not a separate piece of software from Lifter LMS. Lifter LMS is the main software. What Pro gives you is some additional graphic design assets like achievement badges and uh, certificate backgrounds. And it also gives you access to special promotions that we run from time to time for the like pro only promotions. And we also have, um, uh, there's like a a skin for our launch pad theme that makes it easier to copy our demo that, that some people like to use. So that's what pro is about. The universe bundle is really, that's a, a lot of people go for that these days because what they're doing is they're getting all of the add-ons we make at a discounted price. And if we're, we're add new ones in the future, um, they will, uh, <clears throat> you know, if we add other things to the universe bundle, they'll just automatically get them in the future. So the universe bundle is like uh, $800 worth of uh, individual add-ons at the price of two ninety nine. So that's really the, the difference there. So, you know, there's the free users, individual add on people, then the people that uh, get the bundle. And then there's people who go for the done for you service. So it just depends on where you're at and what you need. Chris, with the Lifter LMS Pro, you also get access to support as well, right? Yeah. Yes. Like, so uh, um, an example of that would be if you're a free Lifter LMS user and you're not using any add ons, but you want to be able to access our priority support and uh, use our ticketing system, then, then that, is, um, that is also a benefit to Lifter LMS Pro. All right, so let's see what the next one is. Uh, Michael asks, can we allow for sub administrators examples? I have several instructors, each would have a course and like to see activity of just their students. I love this question, this is one of the Again, this is another one of our, this is like the one I did. Well, I, saw, I sort of mentioned it in what I was saying before about our top priorities for 2017. Um, it's like a group leaders functionality where a teacher or let's say a business owner could have access to reporting. All the, the reporting and the data in Lifter LMS is really incredible how you can look at and see how people are doing and what questions they answered on quizzes and things like that. that. We don't yet have a way for somebody to log in who's assigned to a specific group of users and be able to see just the reporting for that group, which is what you're asking for. Um, We don't have that yet. You know, the lean way to do it as a WordPress admin is to kind of create a report and then give it to the person kind of manually. But eventually we're going to get to a place where, um, you know, the, the teacher has more power and capabilities on the front end of the website or in the reporting screens and also this kind of group leaders feature I'm talking about here, uh, which may or may not also be a teacher. All right. So let's see here. I'm just going to check the chat here. You're welcome, Nat. And, uh, uh, just, uh, thank you from, um, not be there. So, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, there's and a I, couple new QAs that, Q&As oh, that popped up. <laughs> good. Um, Nat just, by the way, just said in the chat, he's moving over from optimized press. I think that's great. I used to follow optimized press a long time ago. I think the first membership site I built with it, 
Uh, but a lot's happened. A lot's changed in the past six years. And, um, you know, optimized press was kind of cutting edge at the time, but it's, it's great to, uh, you know, what we're doing now is like a whole, whole other level. So Regina asks, does Lifter LMS allow you to give unique passcodes for each user? Yes. Like by default, when they create an account, they have a, um, a, uh, their own password, which they can reset if they need to. If you're using the Lifter LMS voucher system, you can create unique voucher or activation codes that you give out to people to, to activate their accounts. So yeah, that's, uh, that's just part of the, um, the user experience of uh, the, the learner. Cool. <clears throat> well, um, I think that covers it. I want to thank everybody for coming today and joining us on this webinar. And uh, thank you, Allie and Kathy Chris. for being here. And uh, it's always fun to connect with the community. We're, like I mentioned in the recent blog post, is we really do care about you and care about your success. And we're always listening to what you need, what you're struggling with. And that's what helps us build the best possible product. So thank you for coming and checking out these, uh, you know, all the steps and bases you need to cover to go from zero to LMS website. And have a great rest of your day. Bye.